YouTube channel. This is Lee Cullum. We've got an interesting one today in metric of the month. It's configuration management. Just a reminder here in the Microsoft App Source to look out for new modules. Uh, next, we've got configuration and asset management intelligence. This is our current freebie, which is the uh, Northcraft Analytics uh, forward schedule of changes and tasks for ServiceNow, Remedy, and other different enterprise applications for IT. All right, let's get started with configuration management. We've got three use cases today which are relying on our new CMDB snapshot module. Okay, each of our different process areas includes a number of different cubes for your analytical use case. And again, these cubes work with Power BI, Tableau, Excel, MicroStrategy, et cetera. So you can bring your own BI for IT analytics. Okay, so here in CMDB, we'll do three use cases. First, I want to show you the growth in CIs year over year. Okay, and then next we'll get into tracking data quality over time for a specific attribute or set uh, index of attributes that you choose. And then we'll end up with uh, a two-layer composition analysis with a MECO chart and show you how the new filters functionality works in uh, Power BI, which will be released uh, next month in March 2019. Okay, so CMDB growth. Um, okay, first we've already got our previous year of configuration items selected. Next, we want to do our current year, right? That'll become our actual, okay? And then we choose our attribute, and this is going to be from your source system, be it, you know, Remedy or ServiceNow. So, you know, you would want to look at maybe class or uh, category, subcategory, product categorization if you're BMC. Um, so let's have a look here. Okay. Um, Okay, so we're going to look at product categorization. Now, a choice you have to make, since this is a bar chart visual, is how deep do you want to go? Uh, tree maps are better with uh, large uh, series in, large numbers of series in the attribute, okay? And, uh, you know, bar charts don't handle as much data on the screen as well. Um, but, we'll I, but we do want to get some more detailed analysis going, so we're going to go to... Um, uh, product categorization tier two, so we have a decent amount of detail. And let me expand that, make it a little bit larger here. So, what we're doing is, you know, we're looking at our different uh, CI classes, and we're looking at the growth. So, um, we uh, we've got application CIs growing at a healthy clip there, twenty point eight percent year over year, and uh, operating system software as well increasing considerably. This is on a very large uh, data set of 5 million CIs. Um, <clears throat> your, obviously, your mileage may vary. Um, the, of course, the smaller the data set, the more manageable and the deeper you can go in the categorization to get more granular information. Uh, for example, you might want to include version number um, so that you can look at, you know, let's say you're deploying Windows 10, rolling it out, um, and you are deprecating Windows 7 in your organization over time, um, this would be a great uh, place to look at, um, you know, the decrease um, that is happening in the Windows 7 operating systems for your laptops and then the increase, the, you know, corresponding increase in uh, Windows 10 to measure the status of the rollout. So, you know, I know that's more desktop oriented and not necessarily uh, infrastructure and configuration management, but but you get the idea. It could um, just as easily apply to your rollout of um, you know SAP or um, you know maybe Salesforce, etc. Okay, uh, so let's move on now into data quality over time. Okay, so here I like this one, and this is when you see our new asset management intelligence. Uh, module and there is a video of that that we've released so you can take a look at that one on the YouTube channel with our package content around this it's going to be much more uh, detailed than I'm going to cover today but um, <clears throat> when we look at data quality over time this is one that is you know very difficult if you don't have the ability to track historical um, you know historical measures and, and snapshot different attributes perfect example here in our performance metrics 
We want to look at the percentage of CIs meeting disaster recovery requirements. Okay, so um, what does that mean? Well, it varies for every organization. Um, maybe you want to look at the data center location. Maybe you want to look at the serial number. Um, it could be you know, the cost center. Um, you have uh, better data quality with discovery, uh, excuse me, discoverable attributes let's say like the host name, and when you get into non-discoverable attributes um, like the cost center, you know, the data quality goes down. So in a report like this, it is very helpful for areas where your discovery capabilities go down. Um, okay, so let's see here. And, and it's also helpful for um, even, uh, even for discovered attributes like serial number because uh, they're all stored a little bit differently. Okay, so next we're going to bring in the time element, right? Let's bring in um, our month, okay? So now we've got the ability to track that data quality over time. So you can see that it's increasing. That's great, okay? Um, we like that. Next, we want to look at a more granular approach, right? So it's great to know this aggregate level piece of information, but what I really want to see is okay, well, which um, specific CIs are missing serial number, for example. Okay, so now what we want to do is start dragging in the granular fields. Okay, so we'll put uh, CI name in there. We'll put in serial number. We'll put in, um, put in some of our, our uh, hierarchies, you know, that you know will be discovered. So we'll look at uh, product categorization. This parent, parent functionality, by the way, is... Um, the ability to look at the related CI, um, and that can be applied differently in, uh, in different CMDB technologies, but um, generally speaking, like if you look in uh, Atrium CMDB from BMC, then that would give you the ability to look at, let's say you're in the operating system class, you could go up and look into the computer system class dynamically. So um, it's a dynamic join. Pretty cool functionality that we offer as well. Uh, we're not going to focus on that today, though. But okay, what we've done is now we've given you the ability to drill down to the exception, so that you can manage by exception. So in August, I can see here are the uh, CIs created that don't have a serial number. Okay, and uh, you know I think that's pretty helpful. Looking at that, um, you could also use a uh, you know modified date. Uh, time dimension as well. That might give you some additional visibility. One thing I like to do in these uh, situations, and it's kind of a good segue into the MECO chart, is let's do a tree map and show you where uh, the limitation is. Okay, so I do total uh, configuration items, and now if I change my visualization over to a tree map here, okay? Um, okay, so check this out. Okay, I've got my <clears throat> product categorization, and I want to look at in one screen. I want to look at uh, you know product categorization to tier two, and then I want to you know also look at the sub composition. Let's say for example here of applications into uh, you know which enterprise applications are we talking about? Are we talking about Microsoft Exchange? Are we talking about you know SAP, uh, etc.? So I want to look at that in one chart. Okay, so I do, uh, there it is, um, tier three, and uh, we can't really see that. That's sort of a, that's, that's a limitation of the uh, tree map, okay? Not, not a super handy visualization. So this is where the MECO chart comes in, and I think it's great visually, and uh, we can also use then the new filter functionality to show you how we can improve it a little bit. So... Uh, we want to see, uh, we're going to use this MECO chart again. This is also from the um, Power BI Marketplace, so you can feel free to download that. Really easy to do it. You just click the three dots and hit Import from Marketplace. Okay. Um, okay, so we've got our MECO chart. We're going to improve upon our tree map a little bit here. Okay, so I am going to do my uh, total, okay, for configuration items. And then I want to bring in my categorization for comparison so that I can more easily see. 
the uh, composition. So we'll do tier two, and then we'll do tier three, and bam. Um, okay, now this is a lot. Of, this is probably an eyesore to the community. So we may want to take it back a notch and go tier one and tier two potentially. Um, yeah, so you could look at the you know the combination that works best for you. There we go. I think that's the best. Okay, so let me just expand that a little bit so you can see it and kind of explain this. Okay, so um, you know our network is product categorization tier one, tier two, and in that we have different colors to show you the switches and routers, okay, and the counts associated with them. So I, I find that really helpful and a good use case for the MECO chart. Okay, now uh, this next thing, you've seen traditional filters, right? Okay, just a brief, uh, a brief review of the differences, okay? Um, I've got, uh, we're going to add a traditional filter here using the slicer, okay? And we'll do, uh, use this date.value. This is the quickest way to get to the slider and the uh, relative dates, okay? So we've just, we, we click this drop down menu and we turn that into a rel relative date. And we can look at, let's say, the last, uh, you know, five months of data or something like that, okay? So we filter it, right? That's, that's one way to do it. Um, now, if you want to be able to hide these filters from the consumers of your report, we're going to use this uh, feature that's in beta. It's not out yet within Power BI, but I think you'll like it. Uh, it's these filters which you can hide. So um, we'll drop our um, yeah, drop our date dot value in there. Oh, geez, excuse me, I did that. There we go. Um, just a minute ago, sorry. Um, okay, let me just drop it in there. Okay, um, we drop date dot value here. I'm sorry about that. Into the page level filters. Okay, and you can have as many as you like. Um, we could use. Uh, let's say you want to look at priority and drop that in as well. Okay. Um, I'll drop it in the page level filter. And of course you can have the global um, report filters as well. But this gives us filters here that we can hide again from the consumer. So these are uh, set by you know the administrator or the, or the person that creates the report and then shows the consumer the exact data that you want them to see without giving, giving them the ability to modify it themselves and have the self-service capability. So uh, new with filters, thought we could uh, touch on that, and I found it really helpful. So um, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Again, this is the metric of the month. Uh, the metric of the month is our ability to track CI growth over time. So um, percentage of any attribute that you would like to um, measure over time and its change in that period. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on the YouTube channel, reach out through our 800 number on the website, contact us on the website, um, and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have or give you a demonstration of our products. Thank you for your time.